guys, welcome back to another ESL podcast or a Facebook YouTube video, man. Today is an addition. It's a special one. It's I else. We're getting back into the reading, man. You know, I haven't done one of these for a long time. Okay. Now, for those of you listening to me on the podcast, you're probably saying, no, you have like one week ago. I know, but I upload way in advance. But for videos, I've kind of just phased back a little bit from the IELTS because I realized that wasn't my demographic, right? So my demographic is normally TOEFL IBT. That's where a lot of my students come from. Some of the best podcasts I have on my entire podcast are all TOEFL IBT or ITP. So I've been focusing a lot on that, man. But for the IELTS badge, the membership is $50 a month with coaching hours and a lot of other things. If you don't want to wait for this and you are preparing for an IELTS right now, holla at your boy is what we say in American slang. Or there's coaching and other things available. But again, I just wanted to do one of these, man, because it's been a long time. I want to kick off the new year, man. I hope you guys had a wonderful uh, Christmas and New Year's out there. Again, stay safe. And now we are, it is officially January 7th. For those of you who are listening to my podcast, I believe that this will be uploaded the 31st of January because, again, that's weekend, and I normally upload the different test preparation courses on the weekend. Nonetheless, and with that being said, I need to turn on this air because it's hot as hell, and we're going to dive into a special type of reading today. We're back in it, people. Reading, it is my kryptonite, but the biggest kryptonite is this specific reading that we're going to be doing and discussing right here, right now. The impact of driverless cars. And as you guys see here on video, and as you guys do not see on my podcast, the impact of driverless cars. Guys, this little section of the IELTS reading is called a word list. I hate this. I believe that this is, if there, if there, again, you know, we believe in a lot of different things out there, but if there were a human devil, this would be it. This is the most annoying section. I remember when I started teaching IELTS about six years ago, I was uh, completely confused. But now I know different techniques, which I'm going to be showing you in the next 20 minutes before it hits 6 p.m. and I got other things that I need to do, some coaching. So with that being said, and keeping that in mind, word lists are incredibly annoying because you have to find the paragraph but sometimes and most times it doesn't span over the paragraph when it comes to IELTS it spans over the whole goddamn passage all the paragraphs and so in saying that in some of the older tests it's a little bit more difficult I remember IELTS Cambridge number eight and nine they're far more difficult than of course uh, the newer Cambridge is like 13, 14, and 15, especially 15. 15 makes a hell of a lot of sense. But you British, you you Brits that write these books, you guys suck, man. You, you try confusing the living hell out of everybody. But I'm not going to let you. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be discussing today, people. Here we go. We got a paragraph. We got 19 and 20, then we got 21 and 22. There are proper nouns in the first sentence of each paragraph, which is going to make it easy for us to navigate and find this damn answer. These, again, here it is. Figures from the Transport Research Laboratory. Transport Research Laboratory, TRL, as an MTV back in the early 2000s, late 90s. That is your proper noun. And that's exactly what you have to find so you can find answers number 19 and hopefully number 20. So what we have here is, again, we need to find that, indicate that most motor accidents ah, are partly due to, so we have to think of the different types of motor accidents we have, right? And so again, you know, out here in Thailand, excessive speeding, right? In America, maybe Las Vegas, driving under the influence. Uh, there's a number of different things, and that's what we're looking for. We're kind of previewing it by using these compound nouns or compound adjectives to describe exactly uh, what are we trying to listen for. In this case, again, it's going to be a compound noun. And so in saying that, we got to find Transport Research Laboratory. And so when I scroll up, I'm looking for that, uh, that proper noun. I don't want to waste any time, right? I'm looking for that proper noun, but I did find another proper noun, such as the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute, which is numbers 21 and 22. 
but we're looking for TRL, okay? Now, in TRL, I found it here in paragraph B. I'm going to read it out for all my ESL podcasters. It says, there are many reasons why technology is advancing so fast. One frequently cited motive is safety. Indeed, research at the UK's Transport Research Laboratory has demonstrated that more than 90% of road collisions. Now, going back down to the sentence, most motor accidents. They're paraphrasing, and this is what they're going to do in IELTS, okay? Road collisions, accidents, the same damn thing. That's what we're looking for. Got to know your synonyms. Involve, involve what? Compound noun is right there. That's your answer. Human error. No more than two words. No more than two words. Human error. So that is your first answer. So what I did there, and so you guys understand, is I quickly found big key words that I could find. And luckily in this paragraph is the proper noun transport research laboratory. You won't always have that though. So do not just, you know, oh, I hope this, I hope that. We are not a hoping type of team out here. We got to know, okay? So please keep that in mind because too many people, you have a tendency of hope, 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 hope. But when it comes down to the tests, it's going to be completely opposite. So do some practicing. Now let's get into the next one. In addition to the direct benefits of automation, it may bring other advantages. For example, okay, so we get into automation. For example, schemes for mm, will be more workable. Schemes for mm, will be more workable. Now, again, given the fact that we found that in paragraph B, okay, we got to continue looking on because there are two paragraphs in B, okay? Now, if we continue looking, it says we're looking for, what is it? The benefits, right? Yeah, for example, uh, there we go. In addition to the direct benefits of automation, it may bring other advantages. So the other advantages of automation. Now, again, yes, looking at E and F, it does say automation may prompt other changes in vehicle manufacture. We're not looking for that. We're looking up here. It has to be in here. So another aim is to free the time for people spending or spend driving for other purposes. If the vehicle can do some or all of the drive and see, it ha okay, automation, I finally found it. Third line right here. While automation systems have responsibility for safe control of the vehicle, of the vehicle, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to paragraph C. Because sometimes you find one answer here, it may not be in the same paragraph. Hell, it might not be in the same B, C, D, or E, right? So let's get into the next one because Guess what I find in the first, uh, the first sentence? Beyond these direct benefits, word for word, this is what I want you guys to do. In, in addition to the direct benefits, right? So here it says beyond these direct benefits. So it says here, we can consider the wider implications for transport in society and how manufacturing processes might need to respond as a result. At present, the average car spends more than 90% of its life parked. Automation, oh, okay, we got the direct benefits. Now we have automation, means that initiatives for car sharing become much more viable, okay? So I found another compound noun, car sharing. And then it says, particularly in urban areas, significant travel demand. So, okay, urban areas, travel demand, car sharing. Let's go back down and let's try to make sense of these. In addition to the direct benefits of automation, it may bring other advantages. For example, the schemes for mm, will be more workable. More workable, more viable. Workable and viable are synonymous. Therefore, car sharing is the answer. This is what they do in these word lists. Just as I told you in question number 19 on this test, okay, Cambridge 15, it's the same thing. Workable, viable. In addition, direct benefits of automation bring other advantages. Schemes for mm, will be more workable, will be more viable, much more, right? We're looking for that, that comparison. So going back up very quickly, it says become much more viable. Here in the sentence, in the, the, the paragraph, it says will be more workable. There you go. That's it right there. That's how you guide yourself, okay? 
So let's get into these last two right here. According to the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute, there could be a 43% drop in, 30, 43% drop in. So what we have to look for is 43. First and foremost, look for the proper noun, which I had already found right here in the second paragraph of D. And it says here, modeling the work by the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute suggests automated vehicles might reduce vehicle ownership by 43%. But, now, but, it goes into another whole thing. So we're not going to look at that. Automated vehicles might reduce vehicle ownership by 43%. Let's go back to the paragraph. There could be a 43% drop in mm, of cars. Now, what are you going to put there? Are you going to put vehicles? Are you going to put might reduce? Are you going to put vehicle, which doesn't make any sense. Vehicles, vehicle. Are you going to put ownership? Let me know in the comment section. And then it goes into the next phase and we must go back down to the paragraph because again, I have short-term memory. However, this would mean that the yearly, okay, annually, yearly, annually, know your synonyms, space of each car would on average be twice as high. What's another way of saying twice as high? This is what I automatically think and I just put together in my mind and what you must do also, all right? So let's continue because remember we saw that but, Okay, but that vehicles, average, annual, there it is, yearly, annual. So I know it's here. Also, twice as much, double as a result. This is exactly, again, the synonyms. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at, but that vehicles, average, annual, mileage would double as a result. Mileage is your answer. And this is how you navigate. If you can get lucky, I swear, I hope you guys do. But when you do this IELTS reading and you're able to see, oh my God, okay, I got the word list. Let me keep this in mind. Let me find these, okay, synonyms and the proper nouns. Okay, no proper nouns, but let me find the synonyms. Okay, where's the first mention of this? Where is this? Okay, this vocabulary is very unique throughout this paragraph. So let me find this. You're gonna be able to navigate and, and remember how I do this. Watch this video or listen to this podcast over and over and over. You're gonna be able to come up with that guidance beacon. No, I'm kidding. I don't even know what that is. But you guys understand what I'm saying, all right? So let's get into the last four questions, okay? And it says here, we have ourselves, uh, I don't even know what you call these types of questions, but it says, choose two letters, A through E. Which two benefits of automated vehicles? And then the second part, which is questions 25 and 26, state which two challenges to automated vehicle development. So again, Benefits of automated vehicles, challenges of automated vehicles. It's all we're looking for. And again, we haven't touched the last two paragraphs in terms of F or E, F, and G. So here we go. E, it starts off as automation may prompt other changes in vehicle manufacture. Okay. Is there anything else that we're looking at? Nope. Okay. If we move to model this and blah, 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 blah. Okay. We're looking for some advantages, right? But if we can't find that right off the bat, let's look for... F, because in F, the first sentence says there are a number of hurdles, meaning some of the problems to overcome in delivering automated vehicles. So what we're going to have to do and what you're going to have to do and what I'm going to encourage everyone to do, especially on my podcast and those of you following me on Instagram, is I'm going to say these out loud. Again, if you guys want to come back and or check out, I'm going to make sure I write this entire thing out, make sure to credit the BS source put it onto my blog so that you're gonna be able to check it out. And on the second page of it will be lie the answers. Now, I would like you guys to go through this because you're gonna have to find the paragraph where the benefits of automated vehicles are. You saw how I navigate it and I'm like, okay, uh, look at the first sentence, where the benefits, 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 benefits. So I couldn't find that right off the bat. So I ended up saying, you know what, let me look at F. Ah. The challenges, meaning the hurdles, meaning the obstacles. 
So what we have here, and for all of you listening to me, the two benefits of automated vehicles, we have A, car travelers could enjoy considerable cost savings. B, it could be easier to find parking spaces in urban areas. C, travelers can spend journeys doing something other than driving. D, people who find driving physically difficult could travel independently. E, a reduction in the number of cars would mean a reduction in pollution. Those are the types of benefits. Now, remember, I think I read it. It's probably paragraph C or D, to be honest with you. We're going to have to go up because I remember the first sentence said something about benefits. And I'm going to hurry up and check that. Now, going back down to the challenges, I'm going to be able to read this out. So, A, making sure the general public has confidence in automated vehicles. B, managing the pace of transition from conventional to automated vehicles. C, deciding how to compensate professional drivers who become redundant. And D, setting up the infrastructure to make roads suitable for automated vehicles. And the last one, getting automated vehicles to adapt to various different condi uh, driving conditions. So going back to that challenge in paragraphs, I want you guys to listen to the answers I just said on the podcast or video and hear this paragraph because it says in G, it says, it's clear that there are more, uh, there are many challenges that need to be addressed. Uh, I'm sorry, addressed. So after that, it just goes through mobility, development. So we know in paragraph F, that's where we're going to find those two answers. So I'm gonna read this paragraph out loud. These include the technical difficulties in ensuring that the vehicle works reliably in the infinite range of traffic, weather and road situations it might encounter, the regulatory challenges in understanding how liability and enforcement might change when drivers are no longer essential for vehicle operation, <gasps> And the societal changes that might may be required for communities to trust and accept automated vehicles as being a valuable part of the mobility landscape. Now, there were two that I already said. And if I come back here, okay, making sure, okay, that the general public has confidence, that's exactly what it said in the last sentence. A is one of the two answers. Now it says managing the pace of transition, didn't say that. Deciding how to compensate professional drivers, absolutely did not say that. Setting up the infrastructure to make roads suitable, didn't say that. Getting automated vehicles to adapt to various different driving conditions such as weather, boom. A and E are your answers. So what I would like you guys to do is to do A and E in the benefits, post it on my blog, post it on this video, Post it on my IG. You can tag me, okay? And tag me and say, hey, Arsenio, I think it's these two benefits. Check out my blog, thearseniobuckshow.com, so you can actually comment on the blog too, all right? And with that being said, guys, that was a little bit of a quick one. I could have taken a little bit more time, but I know a lot of you out there have a little bit of short term, okay? So thank you so much for tuning into this a wonderful video. Again, if you guys have difficulty, one-on-one -on -one coaching is available. The membership site is available. That's very, very good, especially for people who have writing difficulties. Let me know about that. Group coaching is also available. And if you want IELTS classes, and this one's the cheapest product of them all, that's available too. Nonetheless, man, I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's. Start off the year right. Don't worry about all the craziness that's happening around the world, especially out there in America. Focus on your goals and make sure you go after that purpose every single day and plant those seeds. I'm grateful for all of you. Thanks for tuning into this video. Stay tuned for more. Over and out.